I want to start off by saying that I don't know the law and I'm not giving legal advice and I'm not telling anyone what to do. I want to talk about emulation, ROMs, piracy, like basically the whole topic and talk about different aspects of it that I think put it in a gray zone. In terms of legality, having an emulator downloaded on your computer or making an emulator or necessarily even using an emulator is not illegal. It is the ROMs that typically make you cross into illegal territory. Now, ROMs are typically copyrighted content, meaning that uh, they're a ripped copy of the original license distributed in a way that is not legal meaning that it's not like the original license because a lot of times I'll hear people say oh well I only download the ROMs of the games that I already own but technically it is copyrighted material it could be missing some code and it's also not directly the license that you bought to play on so like when I talked about the licenses before when you buy a copy you are buying the right to use that that license until your copy or your machine basically dies and so by, by downloading a ROM Unless you're directly ripping your game to play on an emulator, technically it is illegal. Um, in some places it's okay to rip your own game and play, have like a backup of it. But it also turns out that buying the, the stuff that you need to basically dump your like ROM, apparently those things are illegal. So again, it makes it kind of this weird gray zone where the em emulator itself isn't inherently illegal, but all the other stuff is. So, probably my favorite morality. I, I think this, is, this can be a fun topic, because the morality of downloading ROMs, I think, can really hinge depending on what, your, like, what conditions caused you to want to download the ROM in the first place. You could argue that downloading a game is basically undermining any of the work and effort that publishers or developers did to basically make that game. You could also argue that that then bleeds into a financial impact, meaning that you are stealing money from those people. I will play devil's advocate in saying that if you downloaded a like SNES ROM in 2024, you're not stealing money from a company like Nintendo. Now they do have their like online Switch service. However, you're paying for a service, not for the license. And honestly, in my experience, if you're going to pay for the online service, you're going to pay for it. And downloading a ROM is not going to stop you from doing that. So I would say that that is, in, in a morality standpoint, I don't really see an issue with that. Also, I think Nintendo's perfectly fine with their money bags. But back on Nintendo, if you, for example, downloaded a ROM of Super Mario World, is that morally wrong? Because you can pay for the online services for Nintendo. You can also buy the SNES Mini to also play an emulated version of Super Mario World. So do you think that it is morally, ethically wrong to download a ROM to a game that is available in another platform? Another interesting point when it comes to the morality of downloading or pirating games is you're hurting the company financially, right? Like Nintendo, you're taking a copy from them. But when it comes to like indie companies, it seems like some interviews were saying that it was actually helpful for people to pirate and download their games because it was helping get the word out. People were experiencing their games and, and wanting to go out and buy them. So they were finding that they were actually gaining more money. Now I'm not saying that piracy and all that is like going to help every company. I think people are gonna lose out of money. But I do find that interesting that there's kind of this double-edged sword where like the bigger companies are losing out on money, but the smaller companies may actually be benefiting by getting more of a word out, more people playing it, more people talking about it. So that's another interesting point of it. And I think a lot of interviews with a lot of different people were indicating that most people found it to be more helpful than harmful, which is a very interesting uh, outlook. Now, the big one is accessibility to a game. Now, a very, very expensive old game to download a ROM of it, I think is perfectly fine because paying somebody secondhand hundreds of dollars to play an older game, I think is outrageous. Unless you are a collector, then that's another story and that's something you're electing to do. However, I do not think you should have to pay $300 to play Earthbound 
uh, for a cartridge only. And that price has probably skyrocketed since the last time I looked at it. I think if it's not available somewhere else, which in that case it is on the SNES Mini, but for example, let's say it's not, um, I do think it's important to be able to play older titles and not give that money to secondhand parties if you don't want to. Your Nintendo and other companies are not losing out by you not buying a ridiculously priced physical game from a uh, seller. So I think when it comes to that, I, I'm perfectly a-okay with it. I mean, it's some of the game prices have gotten completely ridiculous. And so emulation is making it to not work only where we can play older games that we remember, but I do think that there's an argument and that's for the next section. Video game preservation. Thing that's becoming a lot more important to me as I get older is video game preservation. I didn't really take much of an interest in this topic until more recently, but I think it is really important that we preserve video games. I think that a lot of titles have been lost to time because someone didn't back up a ROM and they don't have accessibility to it anymore. So I think that emulation is a great thing for video game preservation and some of the things that people are trying to do to preserve some of these titles. And when it comes to video game preservation, I mean, our consoles and, and our physical cartridges and CDs are not going to last forever. Like the human body, they're going to deteriorate over time. And so I think it is very important while we can to be able to back up these games and be able to play them in a way that does not make us have to constantly use the older hardware and older cartridges. Now, me as a collector, I love playing on the original hardware. But I am very aware that in the future, those things will deteriorate with time, especially as I'm using it. I mean, I have been fighting a lot with lasers failing on multiple consoles, and that's going to be a constant battle. And there might be a time where I don't want to fight that anymore, and maybe emulation is going to be the only way I can play a game. You could also argue that uh, preserving video games is very important for cultural preservation, meaning that you are freeze fra framing a moment in time where video games you know, were released at a particular time with particular things inside the game that you wouldn't find today. You know, censorship has become a problem recently with remakes, Paper Mario being at the forefront recently. So having games freeze framed in their time period, I think is also impo important for cultural preservation and having that be available for future generations to be able to play, observe, study, whatever they want, but by freeze framing that, a lot like music and movies, I think that is equally important. In the world of YouTube, I know that John Hancock is thinking or wanting to open a museum. I know that Kelsey Lewin, uh, the owner of Pink Gorilla, has been active in that as well, but they're doing some really awesome things to help with video game preservation by putting up things at game conventions showing the history and very cool, unique items but I haven't been able to do more extensive research search and like to organizations. And so that is something I'd like to do in the future and maybe even talk about it in a video. But I think that the work that people are doing is very important. And as I do more research on it, I might want to make another video just dedicated to that. So I do agree that this is all like a gray area. You know, emulation itself, I think is a very good tool to have, especially when it comes to video game preservation. I do think that downloading like modern games, like games that are being released on the Switch is morally wrong. I do think that if you can go out and support the people who worked hard to make those games and you want to enjoy those games that you should go ahead and go out and buy them. You know, we were talking about voting with your wallet in my last video and voting with your wallet means that it's also paying people for their work. Now, do I think that it's bad to download a ROM of a game that's worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars that you can't go to the store and buy? for a reasonable price and it's, uh, I guess, not on an online service, which I'm not a big fan of. No, I, I don't actually see a problem with that. I think we should be allowed to enjoy older games and preserve them. And even if companies like Nintendo don't necessarily care about that and they only care about their wallet, I care. I think we should be able to play older games without having to completely break the bank. I think that's completely unreasonable. I mean, think about it. The Dolphin Emulator, they've been fighting them for years. And imagine if you wanted to play like a game like Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. That game's worth a couple hundred dollars and it's not available on any other platform. I think locking people out of being able to enjoy games regardless of how they do it, especially if you can't do it in the right way, I, I don't see a problem with that at all. It would be interesting to hear if 
something changed in the future where after a certain amount of time, a game was available to have the ROM dumped, whether it was for preservation purposes or for playability or anything like that. I don't know if there's anything like that out there, so let me know in the comments down below. But this was just kind of a little bit shorter video for me, I guess, about emulation, ROMs, piracy, and kind of just a little bit of information as I had found it interesting recently. But let me know what you think of emulating down in the comments down below. You know, what about EverDrives? You know, I, as EverDrives are essentially just emulators with a bunch of ROMs on them for original consoles. You know, is it okay? What do you think of the secondhand market? What do you think about do companies lose or gain from people pirating their games? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget, there's a pixelated world waiting out there for you. Be a good boy. Be a good boy. Be a good boy. No, you say hi. You say hi.